What does a jar of peanut butter and a smartphone have in common? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Except your peanut butter, four US dollars, is usually good for two years. And so is your $1,000 smartphone. But if you knew how to unscrew things and remove glue, you could save one of the 420 million phones being dumped into the landfill every year. That's 800 phones every minute. Think about your last smartphone. The screen probably cracked or the battery life ran down. And when you bought it into the store for repair, the repair cost was so high and the trade-in value so low that you decided it was probably better to buy the latest model. After all, a new one is guaranteed to be compatible with the version of software that is going to be rolled out any minute now, right? But did you realize the phone you're throwing away is a literal gold mine? In fact, there is enough gold in this phone for one-tenth of an Olympic gold medal. That's 42 million gold medals into the waste on a yearly basis. There is so much value in these phones that we throw away without a second thought. Ever wonder where these phones go? When you're done with your phone, this delicate system of mercury, lead, cables, and even gold that allow you to work from home or mindlessly scroll through Instagram every day, they end up as toxic e-waste in the landfills of third world countries like Bangladesh, my home. Countries like these don't have the proper infrastructure or resources to recycle electronic waste, and they turn into the world's junkyard. These toxic piles release chemicals into the air and the soil and affects the communities there. The ads should probably say, designed in California, made in China, and dumped in Bangladesh. It doesn't have to be this way. You'd be surprised at what you can repair and what a difference you can make with a little bit of know-how and the right tools. Take a look at this phone. The screen was cracked, the power button was vibrating, but the display wasn't turning on, and there was no responsiveness on the touchscreen. From the outside, it looked like this phone had reached its expiry date. But this phone that I had bought five years ago when I was still in high school was given a new life with an easy display screen replacement. It's more straightforward than you think. All I'm doing is using a guitar pick-like tool to take off the front and the back panels of the phone. After that, I used a suction cup to pull out the broken display screen. Once that was done, I carefully, but very quickly, took off the cable that was attaching the back and the front. And that's it. Once these three simple steps are done, I put back and installed the new screen. And this phone is now as good as new. Instead of repairing, we tell ourselves that our devices are designed to break. And we just accept that. Manufacturers don't make it easy for us to repair our own devices. They make it so much easier just to buy. And consumers are not complaining. We like instant gratification and happily justify buying the latest model. Now, you might be thinking, Okay, here's another tree hugger talking about another kind of waste and the landfill. But hear me out. There's a movement going on in the US 
that calls for consumers' right to repair. We can get more value out of our devices, whether that's for ourselves or for others. I've experienced it from both sides. Growing up middle class in Dhaka, Bangladesh, every electronic device was a piece of luxury. I've lost count of how many times I've been to the repair store to fix our family's 10-year-old cassette player. Phones were treasured hand-me-downs passed around from one family member to another and never thrown away. My first of anything was never new. I watched American television where kids my age had the newest everything, and that was such an alien concept to me. While most families like mine didn't really have a big television or a smartphone, on the other side of the city, I would see huge dumps of cables, wires, broken televisions, and kids playing on top of these toxic piles like there was nothing wrong with it. But there was something very wrong with it. I couldn't figure out how to connect the dots between these extremes. How was there so much going to waste when there were families like mine that desired new electronics? Fast forward to 2017, I came to Hong Kong to study product engineering in university. All my friends here have the latest smartphones in their hands. In my freshman year, my computer from Bangladesh lost a screw from one of its hinges. And I thought, okay, that's an easy hardware fix. I went to the retailer and they gave me two options. Pay 200 US dollars and wait five days for a full display screen replacement or buy the latest model right now. I decided to try my luck at Sham Shipo at a neighborhood repair stall. And all they told me was no screw, no fix. This was frustrating. But more than that, this was stupid. For want of a 20 cent screw, a thousand dollar laptop was lost. After that experience, I was so disappointed with the whole ecosystem of electronics that I really wanted to do something disruptive. In 2018, I started a crusade. And no, this was not a social media one. I was on a crusade to demystify electronic repairs, empower users, and increase awareness on how to reuse and recycle electronic waste. My friends and I started a repair community in our university where we would host repair parties. <laughs> now, we invited people to these repair parties to come and repair their devices with us together. We had no idea on how to fix these devices. So we spent hours and days watching online videos on how to repair them and how to fix them. Once word got out, our repair parties turned into repair ragers. <laughs> People started coming in with their broken phones, laptops, 15-year-old DVD players, and so much more. Some of them were easy fixes. This first-year student came in because his phone wasn't charging. And like any other broke college student, Exhibit A, he was desperate to fix it. I looked for water damage, battery issues, hard reset it, but nothing seemed to be working. But then I looked into the charging hole of the phone and there was a lot of dust inside. <laughs> I blew out the dust, the phone started charging again, and it was back in pristine condition. Maybe we can't fix how devices are designed by big corporations. What we can do is consciously reuse our devices before we move on to buy our next one. In fact, learning how to repair from online videos is not that difficult or time-consuming either. Try watching one on your way home today.
And the next time you're thinking of buying a present for your friend's birthday, give them a screwdriver. <laughs> Tell them that repairing their own devices is probably way more satisfying and less time consuming than baking sourdough bread. <laughs> a $4 jar of peanut butter lasts on the shelf for a couple of years. A $1,000 phone should at least last longer than that. There has never been a better time than now to claim our right to repair. We have the tools. We have the knowledge. We just need to choose to make the time. We can fix our devices. We can share them in communities that need them. And maybe then we will have less children playing on top of toxic e-waste piles and more of them having access to the technology we take for granted. A couple of guitar picks, a screwdriver, a suction cup. What's stopping you? Thank you very much.